Hey everyone, today we're going to talk all about the Port of Miami. So if you've never cruised before and you're leaving out of Miami and you have a lot of questions, we're going to answer those today. If you've cruised a ton, maybe we'll have throw in a few tips that you did not know about the Port of Miami. We're going to do that right after this. Hey everyone, John here from Bite Size Cruises. Welcome back to our channel. If it's your first time here, thanks so much for coming to check us out. Uh, we're a travel agency. We just try to give you the best information we possibly can about cruising. Today, we're going to talk all about the Port of Miami. Uh, how to get there, things to do, how we feel about embarkation, debarkation. So we've been, if you've cruised a ton, or if you've cruised maybe five or six times even, you've most likely left out of Miami. Uh, we leave out of New Jersey, New York a lot. We've left out of Baltimore. We've left out of Port Canaveral, Port Everglades, which is Fort Lauderdale, and Miami. Miami is the biggest cruise port in the United States. So one of the things uh, we want to talk about is just logistically uh, getting there, everything there. There are a ton of terminals. We're going to go through all of those. If you see me look down or up, I'm just looking at notes. So... First things you should know are uh, th at any given day, generally you're going to leave out of a, uh, Miami on a Saturday or Sunday uh, or Friday or a Monday if you're going on a weekend cruise uh, or a three or four day cruise. But here's the thing to know. If you're leaving out of Miami on the weekend, biggest thing for me that I try to get across to everybody is that you are going to be leaving with at least five or six other cruise ships from a bunch of different cruise lines. So... I always try to tell people to make sure you make plans to get there as early as possible. Here's the other thing. Everyone, of course, wants to get on the ship as early as they can. So generally between 10 and noon, it's going to be a madhouse getting to the port. It just is. So here are some tips that I have for you. My tips are if you're going to the port of Miami, arrange your, your ride the night before. There are a bunch of different ways you can get to the port. One, you could take a shuttle from whatever hotel you're staying at, if you're staying at a hotel, or maybe you're getting transferred from the airport if you're flying in the day of, which we never recommend. Uh, and we'll go through reasons why or why not to do that. So if you are flying in the day of the cruise, we highly recommend you don't do that because there's a few reasons. One, crazy things are happening with air uh, travel these days. Uh, it's not as reliable you know, being on time as it used to be. Uh, so there are a lot of changes, a lot of things that go on. God forbid anything happens and your flight gets delayed a few hours, you might miss the ship. So um, it just in our opinion, it makes sense to get there the night before. Yes, there is a cost, uh, you know, with that. So if you uh, can't afford that or you don't want to do that, that's fine as well. Uh, we just try to make everybody aware of that. You will kind of have a little bit of an issue if you're running late. So, and again, it's just not, to me, it's just not worth the panic. Uh, there are tons of hotels that are around $150 to $200 a night um, that are within 15 minutes of the cruise terminal. So, um, but again, you know, you have to make that decision for yourself. If you stay in uh, or if you're flying in the day of and you have a transfer from the cruise line, they will take you there. It might take forever to get there based on the airport, based on traffic. Um, and it depends where you're flying into. If you're flying into Fort Lauderdale, it's a little bit further. If you're flying into Miami International, it's about a 20 minute uh, ride down there, just so that you're aware. If you're staying at a hotel in the area, I love using Uber or Lyft. I don't love the uh, cruise ship transfers. I don't like shuttles. Uh, you're just waiting for a ton of people. So even if you have a shuttle from your hotel, chances are you're gonna be waiting for 10 or 15 people to get on there and you're just gonna be sitting there. It's easier just to get an Uber or a Lyft. Again, I know that there's a cost associated with that. So you have to make those decisions based on what your budget is. If you're gonna use Uber or Lyft, I highly recommend scheduling it the day before. This way, when everybody gets up and everybody starts to try going on there and getting an Uber or a Lyft, you don't have to worry about it. Your ride's already scheduled. However, if you are gonna do that the day of, uh, a, a couple little tricks. One, don't use Uber X or the cheapest Lyft because they're going to be the most crowded. Again, if you spend a little bit more money, um, which you don't have to do, just tips if you want to avoid traffic or uh, uh, a wait, just go to the next tier up, Uber Black or whatever the Lyft Premier or whatever that is, uh, and you will get a ride quicker. 
So there is going to be a decent amount of traffic getting there. There's a lot of traffic getting off uh, once you get within like two miles. That is generally where it backs up a lot. So what can you do? You could try to stay closer to the port so that it's easier to get there. Those hotels tend to be a little bit more money, like the Intercontinental, which is an amazing hotel. Uh, but that's at least three, 400 bucks a night and you have to stay there a few nights. So if you're coming in a few days ahead of time, you got some cash to burn, that's a great solution. And there are some ports that are like five minutes from the terminal, uh, some hotels. But otherwise, if you're staying around the airport, I generally try to stay around the airport. I schedule my uh, Lyft or Uber. I schedule it a half an hour to an hour before my check-in time. And then I just go down there. Again, if you want to miss all that, you could check in between one and three o'clock in the afternoon and you're not gonna hit uh, as much traffic as you would earlier, right? But you do miss out on those fun things. I know everybody likes to get their vacation started right away. We are no different. We love getting on the ship early uh, and getting in there and just doing all those fun things right away. So if you are driving uh, to the terminal, the parking garage is open at six. They're open from six to 5 p.m. If you are just dropping somebody off and you wanna hang out with them for a little bit, you can park there for $10 in the lot. There are also cell phone lots. So just things to keep your keep be aware of. Uh, they do have parking for larger vehicles as well. But as a general rule, if you're parking there for six days or more, that's $25 a day. If you're parking there for five days or less, it's $28 a day. There are signs everywhere where you pull in. Each terminal has parking. So just follow the signs for your specific terminals. There are a ton of different cruise lines and cruise ships that leave out of Miami. Let's go through those real quick. Royal Caribbean is uh, port is uh, Terminal A. I'm yes, yeah, Terminal A. That is the it's called the Crown of Miami. It's the largest terminal in the United States, right? So it's the biggest cruise terminal there. Obviously, Oasis class ships board there, so it's huge. There is a new terminal which is AA uh, or AAA, which is MSC's new terminal, which they're building, and I believe they're building that with Royal Caribbean. So they're going to share that. Terminal B is Norwegian. Terminal C is MSC currently. Uh, then there is Terminal D and E, which are not assigned to specific uh, cruise lines. Uh, terminal F is Carnival, which can hold up to 700 passenger ships. So 7,000 passengers per ship, not 7,000 ships. That would be insane. So uh, then there's Terminal G. Uh, terminal J, which is boutique cruise line. So you're smaller like Azamara. Windstar, those type of things. Uh, and then there is uh, Terminal V for Virgin, Virgin Cruise Lines, all the way down at the end. Uh, so again, there are a ton of hotels and food options in the area. We love Miami Slice, which is pizza place in the city. Uh, there are a ton of great restaurants, ton of great hotels. If you ever need help finding a hotel in Miami, shoot us an email or leave a comment below. We can give you a ton of recommendations for places to stay. We stay down there all the time. So Anywhere from 100 and some bucks a night that are really nice to very extravagant if you're staying a few days. As a general rule, I like to stay at something just reasonable, like 150 to 200 bucks a night. I'm just sleeping there. Generally, I'm flying in between 4 and 6 o'clock in the evening. I just want to get in my room, hang out, and then get up in the morning and go to the ship. I'm not looking for anything extravagant. Last time we stayed at the EB Hotel, which was very nice, for like 180 bucks, and it was great. Um... But there are a ton of places. My sister is down there right now. She's going on Celebrity tomorrow. And they're staying at Margaritaville, which is obviously more expensive. But there's a pool and they want to hang out and get margaritas the night before. So all things to consider. Now, tips and tricks for uh, getting on a cruise in Miami. One, again, it's going to be very crowded. Leave early. Try to get down there early. If you are going on Royal Caribbean, the last two to three minutes are going to be a little bit of a nightmare. Just Tell your Uber to drop you off right at the entrance to the port and just get out. If you're walking on with your luggage, if you have stuff that's easy, do that. Otherwise, you're going to have to go up if you're checking luggage because, you know, you don't want to carry your luggage. Um, other uh, tips are check the calendar of events of things going on in Miami. For example, uh, there is a festival, a music festival down there with like a hundred and some thousand people this weekend. That is going to create some gridlock down there, especially in the morning of people going to these events. So keep an eye on that. We were down there for Art Basel uh, last time in December, and that caused a ton of traffic as well. So just things to keep an eye on. Check the schedule of events. Make sure you're aware of everything that's going on down there. Embarkation at any of those cruise terminals is pretty smooth. Again, Miami's the biggest cruise terminal in the world. It's not a boutique little cruise terminal like Boston or Baltimore. 
Although the differences between those two ports is night and day. Baltimore is super, super organized. Boston, not so much. So Miami, everything is smooth sailing. Again, it's going to depend on your cruise line. Royal Caribbean, MSC uh, tend to be very quick. Uh, NCL, for some reason, they don't do embarkation great and things take a little bit longer. So those are our tips and tricks for there. If you are getting on or getting off uh, the ship in Miami, those are some things to be aware of. When you get off the ship on your debarkation or disembarkation, you will be able to get an Uber or Lyft, a taxi, anything like that. You might just have to wait a little bit. And it is organized chaos there, right? So you're, you're going to see that there's a ton of people. It's not really clear where to go. Just ask somebody, they will tell you where to go. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And then you can get the heck out of there, get to the airport and get to wherever you have to go. Again, my other tips for leaving out of Miami is the airport is about 20 or 30 minutes away. Do not schedule flights before uh, 11 a.m. or noon. It's going to be very, if you run into any delays or issues, you're going to really struggle to get there. So generally, I like to fly out around one o'clock in the afternoon. If you can, between one and two, that way you have plenty of time to get there, relax, get on your plane, do whatever you have to do. So that is the Port of Miami. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you'd like us to cover, uh, please uh, put them below. Also, thanks so much for watching. We would love you to subscribe and come on the journey with us. Thanks so much. Have a great day.